welcome to I Flip for Math, Lesson 6-3, More Patterns and Expressions. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote today is by Louisa May Alcott. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning to sail my ship. So you don't have to be afraid of math either, because you're learning how to work math problems and use strategies to make math easier. Our learning goal today is to write and evaluate expressions with variables. Here are our learning goals. Those are some books that Louise May Alcott wrote. She wrote them a long time ago. You can tell if you came to my house, you'd see lots of old books like that. That's what I love to collect. Um, write an expression. Use a variable to represent an unknown number or amount. Evaluate or solve expressions and use the order of operations to solve expressions. Here's our first example. Five more than a number times 12. And those pictures are of Louisa May Alcott. She actually served as a nurse during the Civil War. And then she wrote about it in her journal, and then her journal was published in a book called Hospital Sketches. So we'll go ahead and look and see how we are going to write an expression that says five more than a number times 12. So we're gonna use our reading comprehension skills to write these words as an expression. Remember, an expression doesn't have an equal sign or an answer. It's just kind of the first part of the problem. So, um, Let's look at that. We're gonna look at some important clues. First of all, we know we can write the number five as the word five is the number five and the word 12 as the number 12. Um, we also know we can write that, uh, we don't know what this number is, so we're gonna use a variable to represent it. I like the variable n, but you can use whatever one you want. Um, I'm gonna use n. And we know that more than means to add and times means to multiply. This problem could be worked out two different ways if we didn't have the clue of this comma here. And what this comma tells us is that five more than a number is one part of the problem and times 12 is another part. Otherwise, we could read it five more than a number times 12, which would be n times 12. Um, instead, because of that comma, we know this is kind of a phrase right here. I like that we can use our grammar clues to help us in math too. So if I wrote this out, I would write five plus n, and I really am gonna put parentheses around it because we wanna make sure that we don't accidentally do n times 12, and then I'll write times 12. So that shows us where that comma sets it apart. Now, if we didn't put parentheses here, we, um, we really might just go n times 12 and then add five to it. You don't wanna do that. so. Pay careful attention to your grammar. That comma is important in math. So we're gonna do our practice problems. Number one, five less than a number times six. So um, we don't have any commas here, so this problem is gonna look a little bit different. Remember what we talked about. Um, let's see what we got. Go ahead and write it down. And push play when you're ready. Did you write six N minus five? I want you to think about that because we had no commas there. It was five less than a number times six. So we had to write six n. Remember when we put the number right next to the letter, it means six times n, and then subtract five from that amount. Let's um, go ahead and do some practice solving that. In problem number one, evaluate the expression for n equals six. So take that expression that you just came up with, six n minus five, and evaluate it for n equals six. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 31? Let's see how we did that. I think these are fun, kind of like doing puzzles. We know that six next to a letter or a variable means to multiply. So I'm gonna rewrite that as six times n, like this, to separate it out, minus five. And if n equals six, I'll just replace that with a six. So now I'm ready to solve it. Six times six is 36 minus five is 31. Number three, write as an expression seven plus a number times four. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write seven plus n times four? and put the parentheses around seven plus n. Remember there's a comma after seven plus a number that tells us that that is one math operation, seven plus a number. So we put parentheses around it to make sure we work that and then multiply the answer to that times four. 
Let's go ahead and do the next one. In problem number three, evaluate the expression for n equals four. Go ahead and evaluate that in seven plus n times four, n equals four. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 44? Let's see how we did that. So since I know now that n equals four, I'll just substitute that right in there and then multiply by four. And I have to do this first because it's in parentheses. So seven plus four is 11, and then bring down everything else that we didn't do at that time. And then I can multiply 11 times four. I know that in my head, it's 44. Here we're gonna practice doing that in a word problem. Taylor works in an ice cream shop. She earns $40 per day, that means each day, plus a $1 commission for every banana split she sells. So every time she sells a banana split, she gets another dollar. Write an algebraic expression for the amount of money Taylor earns each day. Let N stand for the number of sales she makes. So pause it, think about this, really think about what operations you're using and stuff, and then push play when you're ready. Did you write 40 plus one N? Hmm. We don't know what n equals. Let's say she sold 20 banana splits. Then we would multiply one times 20. So she would make $20 in commission. So 40 plus 20 is 60. You didn't have to solve it. I just made up a number for n. But it is a little strange to see one next to an n. But we need it there because that one represents that $1. Let's go ahead and move on. It's time to challenge yourself. Those are some of the books Louisa May Alcott wrote. Okay, a bus travels 1,300 miles before arriving in Washington, D.C. It then departs D.C. and travels at a speed of 213 miles per hour. Let T equal the number of hours traveled. Write an algebraic expression for the total distance it will have traveled when it reaches the next stop. Then evaluate the expression when T equals three. And I have an S on there that I shouldn't. Come back tomorrow ready to check your work. Finishing up, there's Louisa May Alcott's house that she wrote Little Women in, that's called the Orchard House. Review your learning goals. Is there anything you aren't good at? Writing expressions is one of our learning targets, so we want to make sure that we know how to read a word problem or, um, or an operation that's written out in words, or an expression that's written out in words, and change it to numbers and variables and operation symbols. Um, that's really important. And then using our order of operations helps us to solve those expressions. So go ahead and write down if you're at a one, a two, or a three level in your learning. And then write down any questions that you still have very specifically. You have completed lesson 6-3, more patterns and expressions. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.